Hello there everyone and welcome back to Quest Street War, I'm your host, Mr. Zerantia Lover, but we've got a looming threat and some comments to go through. Concerning news has reached the administration today. Border Scouts begin reporting less than savory counters with what we must assume are forward elements of a larger army. Others have simply not returned to report at all. Though we receive no official overtures from the notoriously difficult government, the conclusion to be drawn from these sudden incidents is simple. It's clear now that the Ter Terrans are preparing to invade with an unknown objective. Oh no, and we have 10 divisions here now. I've consolidated some of these guys. They're only 19 combo with, with engineers. Save on a little bit of manpower. We have enough stockpiles for now, but we'll see. They're only 19 combo with, which is not fa fantastic, but we got schools and clinics, which... Did I read this one last time? I might have. I honestly can't remember. There's been a, a, few, a day or two between this episode and the last. I think I read this one, though. Um, the air almost quivered around the two chiefs as they stared each other down, having equal, uh, equal, several equally grim tribe zebras lined up behind them. The silence was near deafening, but neither of them seemed willing to make the first move. It was a mood that could so easily explode into violence, and though they were both hard-bitten tribes, more than willing to shed blood for honor's sake, that same honor forbade them from making the first move. Also, thank you for your presence today. I'm overjoyed to see that you take your children's first day so seriously. The teacher's new school said with a smile from where he stood at the other end of the classroom, and both chiefs turned to get glare at this uh, exact interloper as their children found their places in rows of benches. My name is Nava Naravaz Tifirast. You can address me as Mr. Tifirast, or for your or for your children, you can simply uh, say teacher. And today I especially wish to welcome Chief Monatas Akian and Chief Zarani Am Amsi. It's an honor to meet both of you. As Chief of the Aquin says, I'm, I'm Sikh, I, the two chiefs began uh, both before stopping giving each other weathering and glares as the mood in the room dropped even further. Neither of them continued saying what they were going to say. Their followers all rose up a bit taller, glaring down their respective counterparts, and the children cowered a bit in their seats. Mr. Tefirales, meanwhile, continued to smile, even if it was ever so slightly forced smile. Gods and necessaries both helped them. If there is where the tribes of students came from, he really had his work cut out for him. Self. Nice. Way more research speed, thank god. Animal construction speed, cash crops. Ooh. Oh, we can really use those military factories. Really more manpower, of all things, first. Uh, industrializing. Ooh, that'd be pretty good to do. Yeah, we're gonna go with that one next. With Tobuk back in prime shape, we can finally embark on that glorious old plan from years ago to let the new industry and commerce flow from Tobuk out into the rest of Zeranti, after all. When they answer to how are we meant to industrialize, they simply to point at Tobuk and say, do that. It's much easier. Slightly better than it was before. before you know, sl slightly. Um, we're on civilian economy, which is good. And here we go. Uh, we're going to immediately go to extensive conscription. So they're attacking us immediately. Not ideal. But we won the first battle. Yay! Uh, if they naval invade, we're screwed. And we're losing now very, very quickly. Oh my god. Um, huh. How are we losing so fast, though? Well, that's not good. Especially if we lose this over here. Because we can hold here. But no old convoy's in here. Do we really want to do that? Hmm. Great damn. The trading post. Cash crops, maybe? With Tobok's fields once again under control with the food supply ensured, we can start making good use of the fields for more than just sustenance farming. There's a deep thirst in the world for things like coffee or tobacco, and we grow it well here. The Zerantian arms industry. We can rely on foreign arms manufacturers that we hope to maintain our independence from now on. Whether it's rifles, guns, shells, or any other tools of war, we will produce it on our own. Um, so they're defeating the crap out of us very quickly. Oh my gosh. They are literally just melting us, and they don't even have air superiority. I am assuming, or I should assume, that their divisions are like 40 combo width, probably. Because um, we can easily hold here. That's no problem. Over here, though, that's another question. I was worried about this. Uh... Not looking good. They are they are literally just melting our divisions like crazy. Oh my god. I would love to see what they're actually using. Because we went down. I think, yeah, it is Grand Battle Plan. So, it's only max entrenchment. Not fantastic, but it's not terrible. As we're finally industrializing. The cash crops? Yeah, of course. Um, the trading po port? Tobox port is more than just a port. It's a gateway into all of Zerantia, and it should be one of the finest all of northern Zebrica. A town of tripping over each other and fighting for space is over. Now Tobok shall welcome every creature who wishes to come, the Great Dam. We have worked out a desert and irrigated it for centuries. And if there is any area where the modern development thrills us, it's here. Going ahead, the desert is going to become ours to mold as we wish on a scale never before seen. And a radiant jewel. Oh, yes. 
When you cross the oceans and pass by Merjip into the Green Bay, you come into Tobol, a trading city of prosperity and progress. The city stands between worlds, be it Mer Egyptians or Imazib, Zebrika, Equus, or Grafonia, or any other, but all are home here. Welcome to Tobol, Coleman's opportunity for any creature. Reopening the factories. It's taking time, and in a couple of cases, chasing down the thieves that had seized the tools of machinery, but finally the factories of Tobol are starting to work again, taking stock. If it has not been measured, weighed, and registered, it does not exist, and the Aqualid uh, will claim it as hers when she finds it. These words have up lit a fire under the Tobuckians, and they are more eager than to register their property. The company is in business with us. Sprawling roads. All these roads to Tobuk, a merchant once told Mikoiza. Uh, admittedly, he was looking to sell her something at the time, but the expression has struck or stuck with the Aqualid ever since. If, it's not, if this is not true, then why not make it true? Age of Prospectors. There's wealth out in the desert, but many towns do not know what do we look for. Finding iron is one thing, but what are you supposed to look for when finding, looking for tungsten and chromium? We'll invite any prospectors willing to come to look, and to know that will pay well for any deposits they find. Of course, I think we did do well as a wolf error. Um, uh, the menagerie bandits, thugs, and mercenaries that infested Tobuk might have been a plague, but it was a capable one. They would not have held out against attempts to dislodge them if they hadn't been. Uh, it's just as well that we accept this fact and study what they did to see what we can learn from it. Iron Discipline. The idea of the wild warriors swooping out of the desert is romantic, but flawed. True fighting ability comes from organization and discipline, and this needs to be instilled into our warriors. Uh, entrenchment speed would be bad. Special Forces capacity, Azerantine Air Force, uh, the martial elite. War is a craft, and one that can take a lifetime and truly master. And like with any other craft, it has changed. With a thousand tools at the crafter's disposal, it... It takes time, immense training to master them all. War is no different, and this new era will be one where the masters will shine, and some comes include, just so you're aware, the path Zerante can go down depends on whether Tobuk chose to keep the promise or not. So since Peashooter kept his word, you're not forced to deal with this wretched hive of scum and villainy instead of choosing, focusing on the tribals. So says, watch out for the corruption cause, it'll lead you down a new path, a hidden path. So says, all, all I can say is don't trust that guy, pretty sure he's the one who sold his country. So says, ah, yes, I love seeing small, weak nations snowball out of control. This is going to be fun. And so says, what's up? A new playlist club is coming. Yep, and I'm going to experiment a little more with this. Guys, we'll see if we can actually hold here, but I don't want to lose this tile, which we will. Which kind of sucks overall, but we'll see. So, here we're at, everybody. And to be completely honest with you, uh, you can't survive as they're on to. It's, it's just way too much. It's just absolutely brutal with how strong they are. And I'm not entirely sure why. I tabbed over to see what Chirup Chiro was doing, and they're doing grand battle plan just like us. Which, I think would be a mistake. Technically, they should probably go Wumble Warfare, because they do use a few tanks. But at this point, here's where we're at. Quite a few casualties versus ours. Um, I'll be, like I said, completely honest, I had to use Cons Commands. Because, my god, has been very annoying trying to beat the crap out of these guys. But reason focuses. The Trading Port. Dobuk Spore is more than just a port. It's a gateway into all of Zerantia. And should be one of the finest in all of Northern Zebrica. The time of tripping over each other and fighting for space is now over. Now Tobuk shall welcome every creature who wishes to come. Which I think we read last time, too, but whatever. Um, the big guns, whatever kills a, whatever skills a warrior possesses, they will not be avail him if he is blown to bits before reaching the battlefield. These heavy guns will be crucial to warfare going ahead, importing the knowledge of warfare. There are many places across the world that have seen war on a scale we can barely, scarcely imagine, and those people have learned many hard lessons about war. We should make sure to listen to them and gain the lessons they learned without paying the price that they had to. Holding the line. It must be warfare as long as we build a mobility, but if we are to protect Tobuk in the future, we must reconsider this attitude. While mobility will avail our forces, there will also be times we must dig our hooves in and let the enemy break apart. Um, they're not attacking right now, so we'll just keep baiting them to attacking us. We do a little bit of manpower. I was just, just kind of sitting here and mobilizing a little bit more. we got Sky Warriors, of course. The foundation of Vader Almighty is a fighter plane, a raider able to move swiftly and strike against all that would threaten our warriors below. They are a warrior's shield and for, take first flight, and they'll demand much of uh, those we choose for this role. Seventeen Air Force hippogriffs brought down the storm king through the use of modern warplanes, whereas we are left having to run away. If we had possessed the kind of planes that the heiress did, things would have been very different. Mayor of Tobuk. He's a snake, but no creature can deny that Vasil Sel Tradat has been an indispensable asset as we restore our hold over Tobuk. It sounds so great, and we can think of no more able candidate for the position of Mayor Tobuk. We'll just have to make sure he keeps, we'll keep an eye on him. I don't think we can uh, invade him over there. Uh, so before the Exiles. Oh, also, we did get more research slots because of a couple few events, but it is what it is. Um, Who do we have here? Do we have an infantry person? We, we do. Entrenchment, army, grouping, recovery. We already have a recovery rate person, don't we? Yeah, we do, so doing all that would be a waste. The Exiles. Oh. What do you reckon that your mother's state will look like in the end? Vasil asked Umalev after he finished giving his report. I hope you have patience with my question, but your mother's great work centers on elevating the Imazib people. She's doing great things and she'll go down in history, but where does that leave Tobuk? The city is not Imazib. What is their place in this new world? A subject people? I'm um, CC, Umalev answered him. Our people have never been one, not really. The fact that she accomplishes as much as she's able to is because she's bartered and deal with them for years. To most of us, there's no greater difference between a Dobuki and Aga. Atagan, then between Atagan and Uzal. In fact, most of my tribe will be more comfortable around Tobakians and Uzal. 
I understand, but I worry all the same. To the Dubuckians, you are united. You are also one people, a very such to be true. Uh, but Imazib is still Imazib. They don't like to say it, though, but in their more vulnerable moments, he made a grimace. It has been on my mind for a long time. Take my advice as you see fit. But if one side says you're a part of us, and the other says we are our own group, then you have a recipe for great tensions. And what would you suggest, Umalaz had figured him out? And how he started by laying out the facts in support of his idea before suggesting it. How to establish a mayorship over Tobuk. One with a wide-reaching authority to make them feel like they're truly part of Zerantia. When one of those at Makuza's side is, is one of them, and will always be, then they see that they're more than just subjects. And who would you suggest for this title? Umalaz asked, eyes twinkling and mischievously. Come now, Basile, you've got a sudden suggestion lined up. Say it. Basile shook his head and refusing to say it, but Umalaz could precisely tell who he was thinking of. And yet, would he really be a bad candidate? Well, I got an early plane. How about have Eric's be? Um, strat bombing stuff not really worth it. Defensive turrets probably not worth it either. Air attack is not bad, but uh, fighters, very basic. Not sure if we'll actually ever make them because we're out of trucks and artillery. But whatever. But yeah, uh, technology-wise, we're almost exactly on the same level as um, Sharp Terra. So I'm not sure why it just. Why we we just fail so hard against these guys? I really don't understand. They have no extra buffs against us. Uh, I'll get infantry attack, and our guys are pretty thick as well. Potion of haste. We've been trying to get a lot more of this stuff too. We should probably get some of this too because we definitely need to output more. We finally have 15 civvies to work with. Um, give me this one too. Uh, more consumer goods. We could do that. Army regrouping. We could recover faster plain stuff, but we don't, do we need that now? I'd rather trade. Skyfall accepts. Great. Great, great. Ooh. Oh, useful griffins do. You've really been the most useful of us, Sir Seltra. That McCoy is just, oh, the bowing griffin that had come to our office. Indispensable, even, one might say. She pushed herself up to stand, supporting herself on a cane, walk with me, and tell me what your angle is. Uh, as I mentioned to your daughter, madam, I'm a griffin with a few ways out. Vasile responded deferentially. Falling in line with her, she stepped out into the hallway. And besides, I've grown fond of Tobok. A smile is not reciprocated, ahem. <clears throat> but yes, I merely wish to take, make the best of my situation, and the Zerantian State Building Project is an impressive one. Might I ask where we're going? Where we won't bleed on the rugs, McCoy's had told him before raising the cane, one made out of iron and bringing it down on his neck in one heavy strike. Vasilo crumbled to the floor, only a choked gasp escaping from his lungs as McCoy's had pulled it back to the cane. I know your schemes, rat. My daughter vouched for you, spared your life, and gave you an honest, honored post, and you repaid her gift by trying to turn Tobok against me. Vasilo could only make weak sounds as he tried to crawl away, only for McCoy's to raise the cane and bring it down on him again. This time he screamed. <coughs> you could have become ma the... Mayor of Tobuk spent your twilight years surrounded by luxuries and comforts and had statues of you when you died, McCoy's spat, eyes glowing with rage. Remember this as I beat your body into a corpse and feed you to the vulture's rat. With that, she raised her cane and let it fall again and again and again. Her age and exhaustion was long gone, forgotten, a rage giving her strength and enough that when she was finally pulled away, Vasil Estradat was long since dead. Oh, dump him in the harbor and clean up the blood. Hmm. That's not bad. That's pretty good to do. Uh, city of Opportunities. Tobuk is a free city, not for right now, and one of opportunity and prosperity, over which the watchful Agua that holds her hoof. Those who seek to earn her for their fortune may do so here honestly and without concern for all of Zerantia watches vigilantly over the jewel of a city. But now we can hold out, which, I mean, they have better intel advantage and whatnot, but still. The Price of Naivety. Well, you have nothing to say for yourself. The cane that lays across McCoy's his table is covered in dry blood, and Umalaz stared mutely down at it. She had been angry to old insiders, her mother sat on the desk, staring her down. Out of a seal's death, his sitting correspondence had revealed just what kind of web the griffin had woven, including inflaming tensions in the city, scrolling away millions of zekels for his own use, and installing his own people across the entire government. Nothing, she whispered in response to the last weeks. Uh, I had been a chaotic scramble to clean them out, and Umalaz had time and time again been confronted with just how much she had hated him. She had all but served the government to him on a silver platter. I have let you down, and I'm unworthy of following in your footsteps. What could she even say? She was worse than a failure, and she was a traitor unwitting, but a traitor all the same. Her mother walked around the table and placed a hoof under her cheek to push her face up. Look at me, she ordered, and Umalaz quietly obeyed. I have covered up your involvement in this. No zebra will know of it. But do you finally see the prize of kindness? You wanted to help an outsider, and in doing so, you poison your own nation. The scar of shame will never go away. Warriors learn from their scars, and you have you learned what you needed to do? Yes, mother. Omola didn't start to cry, but she bit back her tears even though she could barely talk. That was when her mother leaned in to embrace her, making her breath hitch before she realized what was happening. 
My daughter, you are too kind for this world, and McCoy has a whisper, making Uma lose what well composure she still had, returning the embrace as she shook uncontrollably against her mother's shoulder. This lesson was paid in blood for you to learn. You won't forget it. Oh, I got better supply consumption, even though that was never a problem. Uh, they're still attacking us. Which, which I'm fine with, but... Anti-supremacy raids... Oh, maybe we could. More recovery rate... City of Opportunities, uh, nest, of the, nest of the Iron Birds, they were to make use of these new machines. We need to build specialized fields for them to take off and land on. What more, they'll need zebras specialized in caring for and repairing them to work here. Nice. Flying artillery. Ooh, an artillery sh uh, shell weighs about 50 kilos, and we've seen what such a weapon can do to an entire war band. Uh, when, what then can a shell ten times as heavy do if it is not fired from many, many kilometers away but drops straight from above? At this point, we're definitely going to need um, to break some ciphers. I'll go with that one, too. The Skywalkers. Those who fight in the skies are more like a tribe unto themselves, with customs and beliefs that they will, necess by, will by necessity come to differ from their land fighting kin. We shouldn't shy away from this, but rather embrace it. Let the Ignuan Ignu fly high, and let their stories reverberate throughout our history. The migration. The coastlands were ravaged by the storm, keeping more than most areas of Zerantia. Many regions lie abandoned, not the least since their inhabitants fled on the desert. Now that the lands are reclaimed, they can finally return home again. International assurances. There's been no limit of the concern expressed internationally after the fall of Tobuk. An important trade city was left to anarchy and crime, after all. It's time to reassure the world that the time of chaos is over, and that we're more than happy to see their traders again. Trade law will be blocked. Oh, God. Let's go that one next. I get a good amount of war spot, though. Um, yeah, start focusing on at least one on planes, maybe? Over here, construction speed is okay. Reliability is pretty nice. Output's pretty nice, too. And they're still attacking us, so I'm not super concerned about them attacking us anymore. Cryptology, it's going to take, take some savies away, but that's okay for now. Uh, basic chance for playing, uh, early, medium. I prefer cast, in all honesty, but we'll see. Migration. Uh, new tools of warfare. The age where a rifle and the sword could carry a warrior to victories long gone. The Storm King and his eventual defeat proved that. War is like a diamond, possessing many facets, and each one must be polished to an absolute shine. The rifle capital again. Agzat served as uh, Agua did well. Oh. Uh, in their time after Tobuk's fall, it's time to restore the heart of Zerantian power to its rightful home. Uh, the Middle Sea Treaty, huh? Yeah, well, we're off positive artillery. We're gonna start. Oh, hello. Ga oh god, they're gassing us. What do you mean by unit upkeep? Is it like the amount of supplies they use? It's a lot more attrition, but they're already looking pretty weak. Um, this is our division template right now. You know, just throw this on there too. Forties. Nice. More output. I hope we can shell them harder now. 300,000 losses is a lot, but yeah, unfortunately, I wish we didn't have to use Cons Commands earlier for this war. But, cheer up, Tarot. It's not an easy nation to play as. I will give them that. It's not easy to play as. But, uh, it's not easy. It's very not easy not easy at all playing Zerantia, but the Zerantia Navy. For the tall, fall of Tobuk, one of the projects that the Aguilid had decided on was the creation of the Zerantia Navy. Warriors who dedicated, wholly dedicated to the warfare at sea. The sea is a different place, though, and has its own rules, of course. Nice. Hello, yeah. So as long as they want to keep attacking us, that's fine with me. But still, hoofcraft perfection. More up, but it would be nice too. And we're gonna do this one. Do real next. Cause they do have a fort over here too. But we did build at least one level fort here. Oh, building some millies, huh? It's not bad. We could really use them, especially for their artillery. <sighs> Export focus. We really need to go down there. We could trade away stuff, but... Tanks. I'm not sure if tanks would be really the best thing for us. Steel behemoths. Ooh. Warships are immense things, larger than even many buildings, and the firepower they carry is equally immense. It goes without saying that building these things demand immense expertise and resources both. Thankfully, we have contacts that can help us in both ways. 
Tobuk Shipbuilding. A gun can be put together by a skilled gunsmith in his home, but the notion of said gunsmith hammering away at a thousand ton steel colossus is more like the setup of a joke. As with all things, a new age demands new kinds of workshops, and Tobukians have contacts. Nice. Um, go past the defense. And research speed. Nice. They don't try for very long, but the Zerontian Navy, there's always bigger than you can imagine. We, we were commented as he walked down the pier looking at the warship and that lay, that lay at anchor. And the mad thing is that this one is a whelp among warships. Some vessels would dwarf like this, like a stallion would dwarf a new foal. Thousands of tons of steel enough to make guns and swords for an army all cast into one ship. And rule the seas, the leader would need an army of them. They thread the water for days, if not weeks and months, more isolated than a tribe in the deepest desert, and they are lumbering. Every step they take must be taken with the utmost caution. It truly could not be more different from the affairs of warriors. Are you trying to console me? Zagwa asked him, scowling at the Blue Sage's lecture. Wigwer bowed his head towards her. To an extent, but also to defend her noble Agolid's decision to make a Tobukian the head of our navy. I understand your anger, but the lion should hunt, and the shark should swim. It would humiliate the lion uh, ask it to leap into the water and choose chase fish. It can, and it is loyal and brave enough to do it without hesitation, but it is over the dunes and hills where it shows its strength. Tell me, do all Wasa Tasa went into this uh, manner? Speaking to you is like reading a book of fables. Ligwer's smile can be seen through even his veil. No, I'm considered peculiar even among my own kind. Nice. Buffs. I love the buffs. A curious admiral. I'm not sure where exactly he came from, nor if he actually is an admiral or lunatic, but he seems to know exactly what he's doing, and he brings a, care a cadre of capable sailors with him. Uh, from where we hear this history, it might be prudent to keep an eye close eye on him. We're gonna need some armor for this too. And control in the Green Bay. Well, the Green Bay has featured in our people's stories since ancient times and has been a vein of commerce for just as long. It's our connection to the outside world and we should keep doing our best absolutely to keep it open. Eventually the Agolid Queen of Zeranti and Tobok. A queen is born as Agolid is chosen and they are not the same, yet Tobok is the gate between the Imzib and the world. And as we step into the world, we must understand their ways. For this reason, Makoiza shall become both. Resources. Good. What do we have over here? Ah, uh, not good. Maybe a light cruiser? Um, it's not gonna be very great. Secondary battery. Another one of those, and... I you know what, replace it with this. There you go. See what we can do with it. Sure, why not? Steel behemoths. Um, it's gonna hurt us a little bit, but that's all right. Supply consumption. I really do re aggressive reconnaissance. We were using recon, so we might as well get more recon, right? Because these guys aren't going to go to war with anybody else. What are they currently doing? The Invisible State. Legionary Operational Integrity. Less experienced soldiers' losses, but it doesn't matter. They'll buy Stone Palisade right now. Youth Corps Service. Or Youth Service Corps. Native. Oh, hello. Uh, Emerald Light. Daily Biblical Power. The Nightmare Bless Chiruptera. So they have a little bit of manpower left. Not sure how much of whatever they have. As we're just trying to produce, 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 produce. Um, they just stole some light tanks, that's nice. Some armor. We're low on pony power, but we're still doing okay. Um, it's around TS gun. Okay then. Um, I guess we can get that one next. It doesn't really matter too much. We'll keep doing this, and then we'll see where we're at in just a little bit. And I'm got kind of tired of this. Uh, we're gonna do whatever we want at this point. Like I've pretty much done all the focuses, except for the last two, two of them. And ooh, basic small airplanes. Well, we'll see what, how we do. Uh, I just decided, you know, I'll just get back over here. I mean, they still have all 18 divisions, which is nice and all, but like at 40 combo, we should be able to do something here, right? Please, for the love of God. So, and I already used Conscommands earlier, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I should try to go in there, too. 
So, well, also, we have broken their ciphers. And we've got about four days left. I'm trying to do a lot more research stuff. Uh, yeah, overall, it's okay. Not great. I just wish I didn't use Khan's commands, but Zerantia doesn't have a lot of hope for it. Especially at a time like this. So, yeah. Uh, but we'll do okay. And yeah, they died. Nice. Um, these guys... They're still mobilizing a little bit more. They're on not all non-vital personnel. Um, Stockpile-wise, it looks like they have no guns, which is good. So, it is what it is. You know, I did whatever I could. but As fair as I could, but... We're destined to die, for the most part. But I said no this time. Anything else here? Level 5? That's nice. Yes. Follow up new Ayakachitli. So... And we have the rifle capital, and I like I read earlier, the Aguilid King of Zerantia and Tobok. Yes, please. Antipartisan, more antipartisan, which actually probably would be very, very beneficial because I'm sure the resistance is going to be quite high around here. Uh, there, do that area too. And we got him. Well, but we're destined to die, but whatever. So, what do we do with him now? The reading of Chiroptera. When the Chiropterans came roaring out of the west, determined to conquer, they'd broken. A compact they might as well not even realize existed. Centuries of secret isolationism, broken only by the occasional raid, had meant that Emazib and Tobakians both had largely dismissed... Oh my god, they have a huge navy. Oh my god. Um, a raid uh, had largely dismissed them as mad creatures and slavers in the west. And by whom they were content to leave alone as long as the favor was repaid, the raids were a hazard. Just like floods or storms, they repaid them with counter raids or just taking pot shots and retreating the raiders as they left. With the attempted conquest, however, the understanding was off and the favor was repaid in kind. Yet, sure up, Tara. For all of its wealth and resources, it was the land of fanatics that would die before they surrendered, and the Imazib were not going to enter into the death spiral that long term occupation would entail. They had their homeland, and now they had their victory, so instead they fell back on their old ways, pillaging. By orders of the Agolid, every burned farmstead and every devastated town will be paid for not in blood of conquest but in goods. Grain stockpiles, industrial machinery, wealth, weather, national, personal, all will be received and shipped back to the east. And whatever couldn't be brought back along will be destroyed. Chirup Terra was an immortal beast who had survived a thousand years, but though it couldn't be killed, it could be maimed. They came offering us fire and death. Suppose war. Huh. Foreign policy? Stop trading? Propaganda? Uh. Oh, here we go. Let them rot in their ruins. As we're still doing this, focus too, because we can't. Um, brood anti tank. We even had anti tank on our guys. I thought that was pretty important overall. The dance of fire and steel. Generals, the resistance is heavy throughout the city, so they seem ready to fight to the bitter end. The war about Azagua, who stood on a hill overlooking New Ayakachli, as messengers came running to keep her updated. She'd only heard whispers of the city, and it was truly an impressive one, even with the smoke that came to the sky, or rose to the sky. The worst fighting is at the temple. The remnants, remnants of the Moon Legion have dug in there to defend it. We don't need their artifacts, Zagwa. Could respect their grim determination. They knew that that meant no mercy would be given and that they accepted it. Their dark goddess would probably spirit them to her side in the afterlife. Bring up artillery and level the building. Shoot down those who try to run. Move to seize the factories. Make sure to bring engineers along to evaluate what we can seize and destroy or booby trap what you can. Is the railroad under control? Under control? They fortify the position. But one of our structures managed to kill the commander. They're still determined to fight on, though. The longer we have to dance with them, the more of them will kill. Start fires in the eastern sections of the city. Try contacting them and say that either they give us a station or we'll continue to empty the city of fire also. Or city of life. Also, sabotage the water reservoirs. The Amsarmut had been feared across Zerante before at Makuza and snared them in her web. The Zazagwa believed in Agulid's dream and would fight for it. She knew they had an effect been tamed. The old ways would die, but by the gods it felt good to let the old fury out for one last dance of fire and steel. Determined to make uh, us their slaves. Nice. Right, yeah. Cool. Zip on by. Let them rot in the ruins. How dare you. Uh, they're almost done. Go get that one done first. And, uh, very nice. Kingdom oh, the Broken Eclipse. Wing Party's down here, too. As interim commander of the Ursa Legion, I hereby offer my unconditional surrender to the Agulid of Zerantia, and a request that the southeast is spared a soldier's wrath. The young legionnaire's head was bowed and his voice hollowed with defeat. Two swords were held with blades resting against his throat, and the warriors around him all held their weapons close. Should she be so merciful, I swear to ensure that the region is peacefully made part of the greater Zerantian state, all I ask. As they were given what the Tobuckians have been given, a say in her own affairs and the right to maintain her customs and faith. As she grants me this boon, I will work tirelessly to ensure that they become her loyal subjects. Accept your offer, Lord Commander Lucent Eclipse, McCoy's Atagan told her. From her position of towering above him, he was such a pliable figure and had just thrown away his people's ways to save them. For it, he would be branded the worst traitor, and yet she couldn't help but respect it. Look at me, she ordered him and obliged. 
His eyes were like a mirror back into her, her darkest moments after Tobuk's fall. Smiling, she leaned down and took his, uh, his cheek in her hoof. I see the sacrifice you make for your people, and I am not blind to it. When your work is finished, you will be spirited away from here, and you will settle with a trusted tribe, and you will bear the name Af Afsax. As you gave your people life and security with us, or this, so I should give you the same. Now rise and tell me what you do to ensure your goals. As they gave, they have been given. That's actually really nice. At least this area will be uh, good. Go Bucks Capital for now, as we're still building ourselves up with any parts and stuff. Blueprint stealing is okay, and building up more civvies and whatnot. The us things are all born, also some things must die. Excellent, Makosa said weakly. As Umala sat down by her bedside and put a bowl of dates down by on a small table. The disease had come out of nowhere and struck relentlessly, leaving Makoiza bedridden. Despite the best efforts of several doctors, she did not get better, and eventually she sent them out and called for her daughter. She barely could pick one up and shoot it slowly. You told me once that I should retire and leave ruling to you, remember? I should spend the rest of my days eating dates. Yeah, I remember. Umala smiled at the memory as she took one herself. A joke, nothing else. I could have replaced you then. Oh, God. If I had, I would not lie here. Makoiza grunted as she looked up at the ceiling. Merely the effort of eating a couple of dates exhausted her. I'm not getting up from this bed, she concluded after a while. No, don't protest. I've been weak for months, weak in a way that you don't come back from. Days or weeks I cannot say, but there's no coming back from this. Until then, I will heed my daughter's advice and eat dates. And McCoy's a squeeze her daughter's hoof. For these coming days, sit with me. Of course, Umalez nodded. Feeling the lump grow in her stomach by keeping a brave face. I'll speak with Menez and make sure the affairs of the state are managed, and then I'll be back. Well, you're stuck here. I'll treat you to a foreign delicacies I've learned of recently. So I shall lie on my deathbed, bring you as a test subject to my, by my own daughter. McCoy's a drawled, and Umalez giggled as she leaned in to kiss her forehead. That is a punishment for your villainy, Mama. Two days later, Makoza Atagan joined her husband. Makoza Atagan passed on, and now we have a new focus tree. Holy crap. There's even more. Oh, there's two stuff left here. Ooh, the black gold. Masters of the Desert. After so many years, the flower of Zeranti is in full bloom. The dream that Makoza Atagan dreamed all those years ago finally is more than just a dream. Zeranti of the Desert Kingdom stands strong and vital. Her farewell to a legend. The procession through Tobak had been truly grandiose. And the priests of the mortuary cluck, or uh, cult, had presided over an equally grandiose ceremony. It had all been a fitting send-off to, to the greatest Agulet Zeranti had known since time immemorial, and it only left Umala's deeper in grief. Having retreated to her chambers afterwards, she had spent the entire evening not crying, but rather just reeling. How did one process something like this? Her mother, her unconquerable, ferocious mother who had held back death itself, was gone. This mountain of a mare who, to whom the world itself bent had vanished from it, and what was even left in its wake? Juris felt the gap between her and her mother keenly. Makoiza was born in the desert and went to war young, and Umalas had been born in the Tobuk that Makoiza liberated and spent her childhood studying history and arts. This gap would have never been obvious as it was now, as was the answer to who would step in to fill it. How could she ever be in her mother's equal? She couldn't, and that was a simple fact of the matter, yet her mother's words came back to her. You will be what Zerantia needs. If she believed in nothing else, she would believe in her mother. Though they had bickered, she never doubted that her mother knew when what she was doing, and her mother, the harshest critic that it could be, had believed in her. At that point, the floodgates burst open and tears came uncontrollably. None can replace her, but we carry on in her memory. Tribal Council, oh boy. And the settling of the coast. Ooh. The March of Progress. Lose a lot, lose a lot of stability for her then. Huh. What are all the stuff we can do? Ooh, more political power. Even though we don't really need it as much anymore. Ooh, I like this one, though. So let's go settling the coast next. With the recent chaos, the Tobuckian countryside isn't nearly as populated as it could be, or should be. And we have an opportunity here. These deep or desert tribes that still maintain a distance to us will find it much harder to do when we dangle fertile lands to settle on in front of them. Let them ride in the ruins. Sure up to our thoroughly for, uh, for their attempts to conquer us, and as we retreat from the northern and western regions, we leave behind burning ruins and fields. The spoils of last month were being transported back to the Tobuk, will be divided up and put to good use. All industrial machinery falls to Agolit. Uh, all gold and jewelry falls to the warriors who seized it. The food stuff is distributed evenly among the people, and all of the goods are traded on whatever can earn the highest price. Not since ancient times have the Emazib seen such wealth and plunder, and the streets are filled with music and celebration at the end of the war. The southeast of Chirup Terra had been seized under the Agolit's banner, and though the locals were more than willing to fight back at first, the aid of the renegade lord commanders kept things under control. By the ancient customs of war, the matter is now settled. They came for us, we crushed them, and if we took our comp compensation for the suffering they inflicted. As Chirup Terrans would come again, that is on them, but they cannot say. They don't know the price. And vengeance we found justice. Release them. Traitors become the ruling party and left in the ruins behind our foes slowly rebuild. So we release them anyways. Oh! We can become them. Garrett's He's a diplomatic genius. Harmonic republicanism. Interesting. But... Oh, they can... Oh. Um... But we're not even harmonic ourselves, which kind of sucks. But, uh... Hey, I think I'll end the episode there. It was interesting to see what this would all be like. But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'll also see what else we can do with the Zerantia Focus Tree. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.